How are you doing? Brian Johnson with Johnson Aviation, and today I'm going to show you how to shoot the ILS approach. Okay, so we're going to be shooting the ILS runway uh, 14 approach in the Panama City, uh, Bay County International. So first things first, you want to go ahead and you want to brief the approach. So we're going to be shooting the ILS runway 14 approach into Panama City, Florida, Bay County International. 110 is our 110.5 is our localized frequency. 142 degrees our final approach course. Uh, glide slope uh, intercept at 2,696 feet. Boom. Our decision height is. Uh, 212 feet, touchdown zone, uh, airport elevation is 20 feet, touchdown zone elevation is 12 feet. Upon going missed, climb to 500 and climbing left turn to 2700 outbound via the PFN VOR 012 degree radio to green intersection and hold on to 20.3 feet. So when I cross my final approach fix uh, land here, I'm going to execute a uh, teardrop entry because I'll be uh, approaching from the uh, southwest of the field. I mean, uh, southwest of the uh, actual fix. So I'm gonna execute a uh, teardrop entry. So I've got all that set up in here now. Uh, cross uh, land at or above 2,700. So I'll cross at 3,000 feet. And uh, start setting up for, for, uh, for that approach. So right now I'm flying the uh, Piper Seminole. PA 44180. Gonna get my manifold pressure uh, settings right, my RPM settings right. I've reached my uh, my altitude, 3,000 feet. Typically, when you uh, shoot the, uh, the teardrop entry, uh, you're going to bug a heading that's like 30 degrees off your final approach course. My final approach course is 142 degrees. It should take us uh, 4 minutes and 3 seconds to shoot this approach. And I'm looking for mouser lights. So, that's uh, one of the main lightings into runway 14 that should be visible or that. I'm going to uh, actually look for uh, prior to getting to my missed approach point. Okay. So some things that uh, that you can do just to make sure you're on track and you're staying ahead of the plane. You want to make sure you've got the localized frequency uh, tuned in here. 110.5. Okay, is our localized frequency, so that's tuned in there. Okay, and then. Um, you want to make sure that the GPS is in VLO mode. Okay, so I've got VLO. You know, if I'm shooting the uh, VOR, the localizer, the ILS, you know, you want to make sure you know you got uh, VLO tuned in here. So I've got VLO in here. I'm uh, coming up on the uh, final approach, uh, the final approach fix here. So start positioning the aircraft to fly over to. GPS is telling me teardrop entry into the uh, hole, and uh, I agree with the uh, positioning and everything. So, getting ready to position myself to uh, to make that teardrop entry. So, before I even even get to this point, you know, I would have uh, contacted uh, uh, Tindall Approach and uh, requested to uh, shoot. ILS runway 14 approach into Panama City Bay International. Okay, so crossing over the final, final approach fix and uh, started my time. So um, turn to this outbound leg, or not the outbound leg, but I turn to my outbound course for the teardrop and I'm going to fly that outbound course for one minute. So assuming that I have been approved for the 
the IRS Runway 14 approach into Panama City. Once I'm established on the approach, then I'll contact Tyndall Approach and let them know that I'm established and wait for further instruction. At this point, I should be coming back on the uh, on the manifold pressure settings. 17 inches of manifold pressure. Start getting that airspeed back. I want to shoot this approach at 120, uh, 120 knots. So coming back on the airspeed. Five seconds to go. And there's my one minute mark. So I'm going to make a standard rate turn, which is here. Gonna put the wing tip on this uh, second hash mark here. And I'm gonna make a standard rate turn. Okay, making a standard rate turn should take me about one minute to make 180 degree turn that I'm making here. And then I'm gonna do a technique which is called lover line. So I'm gonna take this white line here. And I'm gonna place it on the top of my CDI needle. And I'm gonna get the CDI needle to go right back to the middle here. I want this to be in line so I know that I'm heading straight for the runway. So I've briefed, I've briefed the approach, everything's looking good. I'm gonna continue my scan. Airspeed's good, I'm at 120 knots now. Altitude's looking good. I'm coming up on, um, on my final approach course of 142 degrees. So the CDI needle's starting to come in. So I'm just gonna love the lining. Walk it on into the house as I say. When you're shooting the instruments or shooting the instrument approaches, you know, no matter which what, what which approach it is, it's always good to have a GPS. You know, GPS helps out with situational awareness. You know, the more situational awareness you have, the better. Okay, so my CDI needle's coming in. My glissope's alive, okay? When you're shooting the ILS approach and you're in a complex aircraft, you can either wait till you cross your final approach fix to do your gear down before landing checklist, or you can do your gear down before landing checklist at glissope intercept. So I'm gonna do mine at glass slope intercept. It's the way that I train. So glass slope intercept is coming down below 120. Three green and lock. Fuel selectors on both flaps. 25 minutes for four across for four. Fuel pumps are on and landing lights on. Now I'm gonna begin a decent. I'm a little bit hot, but that's fine. You know, not gonna die for it. Set up the uh, descent rate of about 600 to 800 feet per minute. Get down there and grab the glide slope. Crossing over the final, uh, final approach fix. I started my time. Now that we popped out of the clouds, starting to look for those uh, voucher lights. Any signs of the uh, runway environment? Blue dumps, gas, gas, in the pumps are on. So now, you know, come on down, uh, looking for my MGA. I mean, decision height. Okay. Looking for uh, my MGA, my decision height. Feet, 100 to go. 